M2 passable both ways with care. And there are problems though uh, around junction four upwards as congestion onto the A2. Very, very slow around Gravesend and all the way back to junction four at Gillingham on the M2. Very hazardous driving conditions. It's possible, it's very, very slow, all that stretch there. Uh, A2 between Canterbury and Dover, that was one of the worst affected areas uh, initially last night. And then at overnight, the a lot of people stuck to about eight o'clock last night, only moved from first thing this morning. It was totally blocked. It's now being cleared London bound from Whitfield up to Lydon. Coastbound, I'm told, is still blocked. They're having to deal with an HGV that's on the coastbound side uh, that Jack knifed last left. night. And various other cars also been stuck there since. Uh, Hawkins has been virtually cut off since last night. Many roads very, very dangerous. If you know Hawkins, you'll know exactly why. It's a lot of dangerous, very steep, hilly roads through there. No buses running through there either. A20 at Selinge blocked both ways because of two stuck HGVs. The 259 between Brenzi and Folkestone is not much better either. Very dangerous, very icy snow still coming down in the area. Bluebell Hill, very heavy traffic both ways, very low visibility as well. Uh, the Also affecting both the exit slips at junction three so Taddington roundabout's quite busy Bridgewood flyover much the same being advised to use the A249 to go northbound if possible uh, Strew, Gillingham, Medway Towns mentioned how bad the M2 was earlier most of the Medway Towns passable with care we're being told just to travel slower than normal but the roads are understandably quiet in the area public transport now southeastern trains to start there's 20 minute de delays specifically between Paddockwood and Strood and general delays across the board particularly on the Victoria Ashford line and the London Bridge to Dover line they are hoping to run a full service this morning we heard from southeastern a short time ago Eurotunnel have an extended wait of at least 30 minutes it's on freight and passenger services. They're working their way through that backlog uh, where the tunnel was closed overnight. But there are also poor loading conditions for them to contend with in Folkestone. They are clearing through that backlog as we speak. And a 45 minute delay here operates on all services, sailings between Dover and Calais, uh, not being helped by the fact that there's industrial action at Calais. Perfect timing. The Gravesend and Tilbury ferry running fine. Delays possible on Gatwick Express. As for your airports, many delays and cancellations. Do check before you travel. The uh, activities at Brands Hatch cancelled today. New enterprise coaches in Tunbridge aren't running any services, we're being told. And stagecoach buses have issued on their website a full list of the bus services not running. The very brief summary is normal services with the buses in Ashford, Canterbury and Thanet. Most routes in Dover, Deal and Folkestone disrupted. They're limited between Deal and Canterbury and nothing through Hawkinge. I'll have more in 10 minutes. Share your travel news. Call 03459 811111. BBC Radio Kent. So lots of disruption about. Don't forget, Jules is here after 9 o'clock asking the question this morning. Uh, are we right to be angry about the snow? She's here after 9. You can call her now. 03459 811111. Uh, we have time to have a quick look at, at the front pages of the newspapers. And as I mentioned earlier, they are all in one voice, really, apart from the Daily Express, which I'll bring you in a moment or two. The Guardian, a tragedy of their own making. Hewn and Price jailed for eight months. Judge, you only have yourselves to blame. There's an interview with Chris Hewn in The Guardian as well. They claim an exclusive, although he spoke to Channel 4 last night. Uh, the Sun, Hewn MP to HMP. Eight months for Minister Annex. That's their headline. The Times, uh, jail completes the fall of Hewn and Price. Uh, disgraced Cabinet Minister admits he lied to protect his political uh, career. The Telegraph brought to justice at last in a tragedy of their own making. That's their main story uh, this morning. The Independent, uh, any element of tragedy is entirely your own fault. Uh, that's what the judge said. A sorry picture on the front page of the Independent with Chris Hume walking into a camera lens. Got his nose squashed against his face. Uh, the Mirror, the Daily Mirror. I lied and lied again. Hume sorry as he is jailed. And finally, the Daily Mail, the man who fell to earth. He dreamed of being Deputy Prime Minister. Yesterday, Chris Hume confessing he lied and lied again to save his career was starting a new life in jail. I will, do, will just mention the Daily Express because although they have a picture of... Uh, Hune and Price on the front page, their headline, just how ill is the Queen? Fresh setback for Her Majesty. I think the answer is not that actually. Uh, 22 and a half minutes past eight. Good morning. Let's move on to another story that uh, we're covering this morning. Over a hundred vulnerable teenagers in Kent could be left destitute because of a row between 
uh, the UK Border Agency and Kent County Council. A new report says the young people, unaccompanied asylum seekers who come to the end of the appeals process, are at risk of serious harm because of a disagreement over, over who's responsible for them. The report says dozens could face exploitation, including being sold into prostitution or organised crime. Paul Carter is the leader of Kent County Council. The Home Office is suggesting to us that we should make uh, these young people who are defined as all rights exhausted uh, should withdraw uh, any uh, support to them whatsoever. When the uh, conflicting legislation uh, in the Children's Act uh, says that we should treat them the same as children leaving care or foster care uh, and support them up to the age of 24. Now at the moment we are in uh, the middle of that conflict between the Department for Education and uh, the Home Office. Meanwhile, we're accruing unmet costs, as I say, of £6 million. And uh, our line, really, is to the uh, Home Office to port or support. Well, we're joined now by Rochester MP Mark Reckless, who's a member of the Home Affairs Select Com Committee, and Judith Dennis, a policy officer for the Refugee Council. Uh, Mark Reckless, if I could start with you. I mean, it does seem unfair that uh, the ta council taxpayers of Kent are picking up this bill when the Children's Act said they should be supported by someone else. I agree, and uh, the, the government has said that Kent County Council should stop picking up this uh, bill, that the um, people concerned have failed in their asylum applications, and in most cases had uh, two or three uh, le legal actions, all of which have failed, and that they should go back to their home country because they have no right to yes, remain in the UK. So, so why is Kent County Council continuing to spend millions of... No, mate. There's a lot of man really snarled up down there. They're going to say age is getting it out. Is that that white one or what beyond that? White one. I don't know what's beyond that. That guy's in the... Before, before. Discovery. He's got off-road tries. This woman here, I think he's going to try to get back so he can get behind it. Yeah, that makes sense. I say with the before bees, you can get through it. Look, you can push through it, can't you? But yeah, if there's nothing else in the way. Why, right, exactly. Oh, what fun! Is he pulling him out? No, I'm, I'm going to, I'm gonna, when, it, when I can get a clear road, I'm going to park the car up and then walk to work. you got far to go. Far I'm trying to get down to Hildenborough. <laughs> yeah, I will do. Actually, yes, you can reverse back up. I'll get my car out. I'm going to put it back in the No worries, car. mate. Oh. around when possible. 